Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank the organization committee again is, uh, for a very good hospitality and very kindly people. Thank you. As, uh, I would like to summarize the uh, surgical therapy update in spinal tuberculosis. And the goal of treatment, uh, goals of treatment in spinal tuberculosis are uh, eradication of infection, prevention of spinal deformity, prevention of neurologic compromise. And uh, uh, indication for surgical treatment are neurological deficits, spinal deformity, no response to medical treatment, non-compliance with medical treatment, non-diagnostic biopsy. And uh, surgical uh, approach uh, can be anterior, combined, posterolateral, only posterior approach. And the uh, anterior uh, approach uh, 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 include is debridement with or without fusion, Hong Kong procedure, Hong Kong procedure with anterior instrumentation, and uh, Hong Kong procedure uh, 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 via thoracoscopic assist mini approach. And the uh, Hong Kong procedure uh, uh, described by uh, doc uh, Dr. Haxton in five, uh, six, 1956, uh, recovery rate uh, was uh, 60, uh, between 69 uh, to 95%. And uh, in our series in 20 years ago, is a 43-year-old man is upper thoracic uh, uh, TB is uh, we, we have performed uh, Hong Kong procedure. Uh, if you look at the uh, X-ray uh, during the follow-up period, uh, you can see lots of correction and progression of kyphosis. And the other case is lumbar. Uh, 25, uh, 20 years ago, is we have performed it. As a 65 year, uh, uh, we have performed is. Uh, Hong Kong procedure in lumbar spine, we use this fibular uh, autograft, and you can see also is uh, lots of correction uh, and lots of uh, lordosis. And the uh, uh, Hong Kong procedure uh, uh, has uh, some disadvantages, such as correction loss of and progression uh, to uh, kyphosis, graft collapse, graft fracture, graft displacement. And uh, between uh, 22 to 72 uh, percent graft-related complication and loss of correction uh, uh, is reported uh, in Hong Kong procedure uh, series. series. And uh, uh, to decrease uh, this complication in Hong Kong procedure, uh, it can be combined with anterior or with posterior instrumentation. Anterior instrumentation addition to standard Hong Kong procedure is more effective than Hong Kong procedure alone in terms of reducing graft related complications and correction loss. And uh, posterior instrumentation and fusion in addition to Hong Kong procedure has been popularized in 1990. Uh, it provides prevention of the graft collapse and bre uh, breakage decrease of pseudoarthrosis rate, correction of kyphotic deformity, and uh, provide uh, early emulation. emulation. And the uh, combined approach uh, uh, option are anterior, posterior, posterior, anterior, anterior Hong Kong procedure uh, with posterior percutaneous fixation, uh, and sequential simultaneous posterior anterior uh, posterior approach in the presence of severe kyphotic deformity. And uh, uh, in uh, uh, cl uh, clinical success rate uh, has been reported uh, uh, between 93 to 100% uh, in combined anterior posterior procedure. And in our series, uh, we had uh, 127 cases. We have performed uh, Hong Kong procedure in uh, 57 cases. We had 37 uh, complication, post-operative graft-related complication and loss of correction. Uh, 
uh, our cl uh, clinical success rate uh, in uh, anterior posterior combined sur uh, surgery was 94%. In a 44-year-old uh, femoral patient, 15 years ago, uh, we have performed anterior posterior surgery, combined surgery. And the, the other case, the 57-year-old femoral patient, she had triple surgery, laminectomy, and uh, refixation, and re laminectomy, and no anterior surgery. She couldn't walk before surgery, and she had spastic paraparesia. We, we remove his four level vertebral body, and we use vascularized rib graft uh, addition uh, structural graft. You can see vascularized rib graft. That's okay. Now is you can see vascularized rib graft on the right side. As a 70-year-old uh, femoral patient, is a very osteoporotic patient. Uh, now is uh, we we have performed anterior posterior combined surgery. We we use mini open anterior surgery and also we use cement augmented pedicle screw due to severe osteoporosis. And the 70-year-old uh, TB uh, uh, cases uh, is. Uh, we, we, we do Hong Kong procedure with we know, open anterior and posterior percutaneous fixation. In this case, you can see mini open anterior surgery. And uh, you can do uh, uh, simultaneous and sequential uh, un posterior anterior posterior surgery in the presence of uh, severe kyphotic uh, deformity in the first stage. Uh, and at the pro, uh, on the prone position, instrumentation and stabilization without correction, with or without osteotomy, and temporary wound, uh, wound uh, closure. At the second stage, lateral decup disposition, anterior decompression, anterior colon restoration, and uh, giving proper control to the posterior rod, uh, with or without anterior instrumentation, and final reduction and adjustment of posterior instrumentation at the lateral position. And you can see the uh, uh, progression of kyphosis during the follow-up period and the seven-year-old femoral patient. And uh, uh, we have performed simultaneous sequential posterior anterior posterior surgery in this case. You can see is the lateral view as one level above, one level below. Uh, instrumentation with anterior instrumentation and posterior instrumentation together. And this uh, posterolateral approach is cost to transfer can be used uh, in patient having severe uh, pulmonary compromise and, sh and uh, having sharp angular kyphosis with neurological deficit. And you can see very severe uh, kyphosis, respiratory problem, is spastic paraparatic patient, uh, and uh, is uh, sharp and angular kyphosis. We have performed uh, just is capillary procedure, uh, result of the uh, apex of uh, uh, kyphosis, no, uh, without instrumentation. And the uh, posterior approach uh, uh, option is our laminectomy with posterior fusion and instrumentation, transpeticular drainage, and fixation via posterior approach, TLIF procedure for TB spondylodiscitis, and PVCR. And the uh, laminectomy with posterior fusion and instrumentation is only indicated in patients having tuberculosis involvement of only posterior arch, so-called spinal tumor syndrome with compressive myelopathy. And there's, uh, today, uh, especially in older patients, minimal invasive drainage of abscess and uh, with posterior percutaneous instrumentation, or abscess drainage and stratigraph instrumentation with titanium implant via posterior approach, uh, called is PVCR, are going popularity in the treatment of both acute infection and uh, post-infection deformity. And, uh, 65-year-old previous 
uh, she had previous wrong level laminectomy, uh, she, uh, she couldn't walk uh, before surgery, spastic paraparatic patient, and uh, T3, T4 uh, PVCR uh, was done in this case. And uh, the other case, uh, uh, post uh, now is wrong diagnosis, wrong treatment uh, in TB is uh, she had vertebroplasty before uh, the other center is uh, in this case is uh, treated by PVCR uh, T10, T11 level. Now is uh, the other uh, PVCR case is uh, uh, T10, T11 uh, you can see uh, pre and post op x ray. And Hong Kong procedure was golden standard surgical method between 1956 and 1990. Since this procedure uh, has high rate of pseudarthrosis, grad collapse, and breakage, of, and correction loss, it is combination with posterior instrumentation became more popular. Now, in the recent years, many open anterior radical debridement and posterior or percutaneous posterior fixation are becoming more popular. Vascularized zip graft should be added to structural graft if more than two segments is removed in suitable level. Uh, in the presence of severe kyphosis, combined posterior anterior posterior sequential simultaneous surgery with the posterior osteotomy should, should be performed. As our, uh, our experience in PVCR develops, this approach is being preferred in elderly patients with medical comorbidity like pulmonary compromise, cardiac problem, previous radiotherapy. And in the recent year, we almost prefer PVCR in all patients having thoracic and thoracolumbar spine tuberculosis. Percutaneous abscess drainage with percutaneous instrumentation combined with chemotherapy can be considered in selected patients, especially lumosacral involvement elderly patients. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>